Welcome back. Today, I'm building an MB17 numpad, which is a 17 key numpad from Mountain Blocks. Since the build guide for this numpad is no longer available on the internet, I hope this guide is helpful for any others who are planning to do the same build. And for everyone else, I hope you enjoy the video. The kit comes with a nice Mountain Blocks sticker, a pretty black PCB with nice gold around each of the pads, an FR4 switch plate and bottom plate on which I put my own stick on feet to give the numpad some angle, but these larger feet don't come with the kit, some diodes, a Pro Micro pre flashed and ready to use with VIA, three 2U screw in stabilizers with washers. M3 standoffs and screws, and finally, four small stick-on feet. For this build, I also purchased Pro Micro peel-away sockets from Kibio so that I can hot swap the Pro Micro. I've also prepared 17 JWIC switches in advance, lubed with 205G0 and filmed with desk key films. These are budget JWK linears, and I find them essentially the same, if not better, than JWKs. I paid 26 cents per switch, compared to the standard price of 55 cents a switch for JWKs. These are the 45 gram variant, although they also come in 60 gram, which are red, and 65 gram, which are yellow. I've heard about different tips and tricks to bend diodes, but personally, I found that bending one side on the edge of a table and then bending the other side individually for each diode worked the best. Here, I'm showing how to correctly put a diode into the PCB. Make sure that the black line on the diode is in the direction of the little arrow on the PCB. Otherwise, your build will not work. Now, it's time to head over to the soldering station. First, I finish bending and put all the diodes into the PCB. I taped each diode into place with blue tape so that they wouldn't move around. Then, I soldered all of them into the PCB. After this, carefully cut off each of the diode legs with a flush wire cutter. If you are going to be socketing the Pro Micro, like I am, make sure you save these since we are going to use them later. The next step is to fit and measure the peel away Pro Micro sockets and trim them to size. I used a piece of blue tape on the opposite side to keep the sockets in place. Then, solder all of the hot swap pins into the PCB. I recommend socketing the Pro Micro because it can be easily replaced if the Pro Micro breaks. The Pro Micro also has two switches located underneath it, so the switches are also accessible if necessary. It's pretty much impossible to desolder a Pro Micro, so this way you are future proofed for any issues that may occur. Now, I've kept the same piece of blue tape over the sockets and poked holes in the tape by pushing the diode legs through the tape and into the sockets. Then, fit your Pro Micro on top and solder all of the diode pins to the Pro Micro. After you're done soldering, snip off the excess. Be careful because the legs can fly everywhere pretty violently. Finally, carefully and gently remove the Pro Micro with the pins from the hot swap sockets and remove the blue tape. Socketing the Pro Micro can be a bit complicated if you're doing it for the first time, so I've attached additional resources with pictures in the description below. Now, I'm just quickly modding the stabilizers that came with the kit. Snip off the legs, balance the wires, lube the housings and stems with Crytox 205G0, and finally, dunk the wires in dielectric grease and snap everything together. Install the stabilizers with the included screws and washers and test to make sure that there's no rattle and that everything's good before moving on. After popping all of the switches into the plate and PCB, all that's left to do is solder. Now I'm finally done with all of the soldering and I'm back indoors where it's warm. Screw in all the hardware. An important step when using Pro Micros is to apply hot glue to the socket. Pro Micros can be fragile, so you want to make sure to put hot glue all around the socket to reinforce it and make sure that it is secure, 
especially in a build like this where the socket is not sandwiched between different components, which usually help give it some structure. You can also use thermoplastic for this step if you prefer. Finish screwing everything in, and then it's time for the keycaps. The set I'm using here is called PBT Honeywell Bold from Canon Keys, and I really love how it looks. I have this set on my UT47.2 as well, so everything matches perfectly. Finally, this numpad is programmable through VIA. The Pro Micro that comes with the kit is pre-flashed, which means that all you need to do is download the VIA software. VIA makes it so that you can modify your layout in real time, as I'm showing here on the screen. However, its downside is that it doesn't support many of the more complex functions that QMK is capable of, and if you want to take advantage of that, you would need to flash the numpad through QMK instead. And here's the final build, complete with the gorgeous Red Rose Artisan keycap from Capsmiths to match. I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I hope you enjoyed as well. Thank you for watching.